say, God have mercy. But first, yes, I'd be like, man, lab, but okay. <laughs> My goodness, what church? How do you have this? <laughs> I was there. Oh my yes. goodness. This is so unfair. They were like lamenting. This is so unfair. Especially Isabel, she was older. Mommy, can't, can't you beat these people? Can't you take them to police? Can't you? So I wasn't talking about me. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, no, wait. Mm. We're not enemies. We actually talk. <laughs> Those that are fighting me and saying that I, I did this to her, I did that. We are talking now. We are friends. You're, you're <laughs> and Doris Simeon. You're not, yes. you're not. So it wasn't, after, it wasn't when he left that we became friends. Yeah, <laughs> we did. <laughs> she, yeah, we did. She, <laughs> she was, hey, why didn't you tell me that uh, it was like this? Because that's how I found out that my marriage had ended on YouTube. This is the first time I'm saying it categorically because even Rumi was like, Hesti, you know you've never said anything. Tell you will ask you these questions. Are you ready to answer? <laughs> it lasted eight months. Biggest mistake of my life. My best friend and religion is what caused that problem that made us marry when we were not supposed to be. What church was this? My laughter should answer your question. <laughs> I've had social anxiety since I was a kid. I was molested at the age of eight by my cousin. So, they say that if at first you don't succeed, then try and try and try again, yeah? Okay, my guest today has tried marriage three times. Her first husband died, the second marriage ended after eight months, and the third time around, well, hopefully she'll tell us what happened to her day. She's one of the biggest actresses on the African continent. But perhaps most importantly, she's one of the sweetest human beings that I know. Just a complete milk of the earth kind of person. Just beautiful, beautiful soul. It's Stella Damasos. So Stella, uh, <laughs> it's amazing that you mm. have been on the Teju Baby Face Show no less than 30 times. Wow. 30 times. Beyond the director, myself, the crew, my wife, you've been on that show more than any other person. <laughs> and yet I have never interviewed you. Yeah, we are. And then, you know, we're not even here yet. <laughs> just, just a couple of days ago, I woke up, I think it was Sunday morning or something. And the first message I saw was you wanting to postpone again i didn't even talk i didn't tell you what i did i just got up said holy spirit holy ghost blood of jesus the juju that stella is using that she has been dodging this interview it has to spoil because it's ridiculous we haven't done this yeah i, I asked myself that question too like how come Ted has never interviewed me but i've done shows for him where i interview him yeah, it's always been that way. And, and we go way back. In fact, when I was searching, I, in fact, I was going through stuff mm -hmm. and I found something I was going to show you. If you oh can remember goodness. where this is, I will be extremely impressed with you. If you can remember where this is, don't worry, you look good. Okay. You look good. If you can remember where okay. this is, I'll be extremely impressed with you. Oh my God. Let's say, oh my God. <laughs> this was an award? No. Nope. Not an award. Hey, God have mercy. But first, yes, I'd be like, man, lab, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> where was this? I think you look good. Did you, where was this? I can't remember. You can't remember that? No. Was it in Ikeja? Mm -mm. This was in Leki. What happened here? That was outside the church, actually. My goodness, what church? How do you have this? Because <laughs> <laughs> I have all these pictures. This was... Ali Baba's wedding to Mary Akubome. I was there. Oh my yes. goodness. Oh my This was 2008-ish. 2008, I think. I have to I have to ask Ali Baba again when he got married. I can't remember, but that was about 2008-ish. I remember that. I remember that. Oh my gosh. How do you two have that picture? Because I have all this, because I have pictures that go way back to the university. Back when we were in school and then we'll snap pictures. Yeah. They used to call them motion pictures. Mm -hmm. I have all those pictures and all those things. The weird thing is that people actually steal my pictures. Ah. Uh, I have a picture of me and Mercy Aigbe. Oh, Messi Aibe when she yeah. was in Unilag. Yeah. Because I was, I mean, I used to toast Messi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to toast Mercy because I was, I was about two years, I think I was about two years ahead of her. Mm -hmm. And she liked me. Aww. You know, she really liked me, you know. So we used to hang out. And so we took a picture in front of the arts 
theater. Theater. I'm yeah, because she was in my department. We were both in theater arts. And somebody shamelessly stole that picture. Oh no. You know, I was going to show Mercy someday. Yeah. We look so slim and all like that. Come on now. Come okay, on. so I've always wanted to ask you, please. Yeah. Is there any person on the face of the earth who is more rumored about, <laughs> gossiped about, misquoted, misaligned, mis just lied about in the pages of media than you? Hmm. Maybe Jesus Christ. Because even <laughs> beside you, I think Michael Jackson, relatively speaking. Oh, and Oprah. And Oprah, maybe. Relatively speaking, really. Mm. I mean, when you have not snatched somebody else's husband, oh, yeah. you have taken somebody's child, you yeah. have broken a family. Mm-hmm. Is uh, My thing is, how, look, I, I think I have a tough skin normally, but you must have vibranium. Ah! I mean, yeah. how, how do you handle that thing? It took a while for me to understand how to deal with things like that because I'm human blood runs through my veins so in the beginning it was hard I would I would cry people don't see that side of my life where I would cry in my room and my kids would come in and hug me and remind me like mommy you know the truth God knows the truth and we know the truth we're more important I don't we don't care what people say out there we know you you know so I don't know why you're crying and beating yourself up but I'm like you don't understand that in our business in the work that we do your reputation is your calling card that's your your complimentary card your reputation and when it's, it's battered like that you feel broken you know but over time I learned to put myself first when I understood who I was I understood my mission the impact I wanted to make and then when I decided who the most important people to me were their opinions of me mattered more than what other people had to say and there's nothing hidden under the sun. For everything that they've ever said, at some point, the truth will still definitely come out. You know. So I just said to myself, the energy I will spend crying and fighting battles and getting angry, make her use and they make money. Let me use that same energy to make something of it. So I found myself spinning some things around to earn money from it. Oh, really? Yes. Like, like what? Like some seminars that I did for some couples, people who want to get married and things like that, talking about relationships and stuff like that. A friend of mine and I set up a company, PVE Coaching. So we Uh, call it PVE Coaching. PVE Coaching. Yeah, we charge money to people before they say I do, the things that you need to know, the pitfalls, because I've seen it all. All the talk, all the breakups, marriage breakup, relationship breakup, widowhood, everything, protecting yourself, blah, blah, blah. I've seen it all. So I'm using that now to help yeah. other people, but I'm making my money from it. Okay, awesome. Look, That's I will it. jump back on that. In a bit. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump back on that. That that mar- I'm coming back to that thing yeah. in a minute. But yeah. that's what I wanted to ask you. Um, Isabel and Angelica, I mean, how must they handle... Uh, their mom being rumored about like this, your daughters. I mean, they also must, I mean, have you have you ever been, uh, has something ever been said about you that made them feel so bad so that you felt so bad too? That come on. I, I mean, I know you said that yeah. they are the ones that pick you up normally, yeah. but have you ever had to pick them up? The know? thing is, they were born into this thing. I, they couldn't help it. They, it was not their choice. They were born into this life of their mom in the limelight being talked about so much. And so they grew up understanding that these things happen. However, there's one particular incident that really broke my heart. I was taking them, I think, to a friend's birthday party or something. And then that's when we had the magazines, the, them city people. Oh yeah, the soft all, cells. All those soft cells. And yeah. they just saw my face plastered on the thing. And there were so many people on the street selling them and hawking them. So one guy just came and put it on the back window where they were sitting. I was in front with the driver. They were at the back. They just put it on their window and the shock, you know, they just saw me and then my children could read at that time. So they read it quickly and they were like, this is so unfair. They were like lamenting. This is so unfair. Especially Isabel, she was older. This is unfair. This is not nice. Mommy, can't, can't you beat these people? Can't you take them to police? Can't you Can't you take them to out? I don't like it. And I saw the, the pain and the rage like she knew that she was too young to do anything about it but I saw how it hurt her and it broke me as a mom I'm like my kids have to go through this they have to see all of this with my face on it with this talk on it you know they have to go to school and have their classmates talk about me because their parents have read or heard something and they mention it and they hear it you know and so I started putting myself in their shoes they didn't ask for this life you know when you say things like this and it affects them as a mom I had to learn therapy quickly like because I have to ask them from time to time it, you can't just go through it and say no it's okay don't worry I move no it affects them mentally as well you know emotionally 
So I find myself as a mom having to sit with them from time to time to explain certain things, to talk to them about certain things. That's when I learned that it's important to carry them along. They're not as young as we think they are because they catch things quick. So anything I'm doing, anywhere I'm going, even if I'm dating, they have to know who, they have to know why, what I saw in the person, where I'm going, you know. But over time, as they grew older, they were cool. They now became my backbone. Yeah, your supporters. Yeah. Okay. So when you wait um, on the two sides, you wait and go here, you wait and go there, has the has the stress of all these lies and rumors been worth uh, your career in the limelight? Would you say that, man, if I could go back, man, I would have chosen this one, you know. Has it been worth it? <laughs> <laughs> and I asked because I wake up one day and there you are on your Instagram page on an emotional diatribe. Apparently, a major newspaper had, con- had concocted all these lies. They had put them together and you were upset. Right. So I'm watching this and I'm watching cool Stella. Usually I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, at this point, she must be think- thinking, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Has it been worth it? Um, I, I'm, I have a mix. I have mixed feelings about that. In the, in, at, at first, I would say, "Oh, yeah," because you know, you'd. I know I do film in ten years, but they're still talking about me. It makes you feel like you know how they say in entertainment, uh, there's no news as bad news. News is news. It yeah. just puts you out there. It's free PR, and bad news sells, sells faster. So let them talk. Let them talk. So you're in your head saying, "Oh, maybe it's okay." Maybe, you know, let them say what they want to say so that my, my name will be out there even when I'm not as active as I used to be in the entertainment world. And, you know, but it gets to a point where you have to think about the first thing that people see when they Google your name or when someone wants to check you out. We are, we are grown now. We have businesses. We are trying to leave legacies for our children. So you want to send proposals. You want to talk to people and they want to know who they're dealing with. Like, what will they see? So things like that that happened with that, I felt that it was a reputable, you know, newspaper, news agency. And for them to write stuff like that, these are people that we go to for politics, for things happening in the economy and all of that. So for you to make up stuff and write it boldly, like you had the facts and having people read these things and make comments like, they knew what they were talking about. At that point, I'm like, you know what? I don't care what anybody says about, oh, entertainers, you have to be used to it by now. No, there are some that you don't ignore. I ignore a lot of things, tell you. <laughs> a lot of things that come out. I don't talk not because I'm weak, but I, I've learned to choose your battles. Mm-hmm. But that one was a battle for me because you can't mislead people who trust and believe in you. So I went on that rant and it was, I was really ready because I had my lawyers ready in Nigeria. Okay. So this one, I will come to Nigeria and sit there for two years if I have to and deal with this. And I think they got wind of it. So someone reached out to me via DM and I'm like, no, don't DM me. We will do this the right way. You will do a retraction. You will do an apology. You will fix this. And when you fix it, I will go back. I'm not a troublemaker. I will go back and tell the people now that this is wrong. Okay. So they did that printed it and I had proof I posted it and I'm like okay I'm taking that other one down because they fixed the problem just so that you know not everything you read or see is true about us the fact that we don't fight all the time or make noise or defend ourselves it doesn't mean that you know these things are true because we're human too over time you say okay I don't I don't dare you can say anything you want not lie you are still a human being you will still hurt Mm. You know, so has it been worth it? Yeah, well, he kept my name in the in the news for a while. <laughs> but do I like it? No. Do I enjoy it? No. It's not what you want to be remembered for. It's not what you want people to see you as. Oh, so they actually published a retraction. Yes. Because I was going to ask you, did they apologize? So they apparently did that. They did. And then you took that video down. Yes. Because I actually went to your page looking for that video. And it was such stress because you have a lot of videos. Yes. So I was trying to compare the, yeah. you know, because I went online to find the thing because mm-hmm. it was now online. So I found your your rant mm-hmm. online. So I was now looking for the same rant on your social media page. So I couldn't find. So I was now looking. She was wearing grey. She had her <laughs> hair. So you had deleted that thing. Yes, I took it down. Oh great! So what was the thing again? Because I was finding, the, I was trying to find the thing that they said. So this was what I saw online about you, mm-hmm. where you were saying something about how. Um, you know, um, uh, you you thought you had found your soulmate, and last last uh, everybody go chop breakfast mm-hmm. or lunch or dinner. Mm-hmm. Did you say that one? So I wasn't talking about me. Oh no no wait wait no wait mm, last no. last everybody yeah. go chop breakfast. Yes, I did, and it was for my show Ask Stella. So that wasn't you you were talking it wasn't about me. I do a show every Saturday called Ask Stella. People sending 
emails about yeah. the relationship issues. I read out the emails. I don't mention names. I read out the emails and then I give them my thoughts on it. Okay. So I read out this person's email and I was responding to that email to the person. And people who follow the show they know that that's what I do. But some of a zealous person yeah heard something, picked up on some lines, decided to use that as headline to now write a story to say I was talking about why my marriage failed that I did this I did, I'm like what? So that thing you, that I saw was somebody who just did a deep fake. Yeah. That thing where you said I thought I'd found my soulmate but I didn't and now last last everybody you you weren't talking about yourself. Not me at all. It was from someone <laughs> else's email that I was addressing because I do it for people. <laughs> and you know because of that Tedra I won't lie. It really set me back. I was really hurt. I was broken and for weeks I didn't do that show anymore. I mean they would tell you it doesn't matter you have to keep going. But I wasn't do- that show wasn't paying me. I was doing it to help people who kept sending me messages like you've been through this you've been through that how did you go about it how did you come out of it how did you survive it you're still standing blah 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 help me help me and I'm like okay you know what I'm going to do something because it's not just one person that's going through it so many people are going through the same thing so let them send their emails here and I will address it so everyone else who can benefit from it can benefit but when they now start turning it into something that is not making it seem as if I'm coming to talk about my I, that thing it annoyed, it annoyed me and I'm like you know what let me just leave this thing and focus on other things for now because I don't get the power because you know once one person does something if you don't nip it in the bud a yes. lot of other people will pick up on it and think it's okay to continue doing it yeah. you know so it wasn't about me <laughs> okay but, but so here's the thing have you spoken about what happened with your uh, third marriage uh, anywhere no you haven't no okay so here's the thing you, you do know that nature abhors a vacuum of so course people keep filling people in people ask me <laughs> and they'll keep filling in all sorts of things and I'm thinking to myself that why doesn't Stella even talk about this because mm-hmm. based on some of the little things you told me mm-hmm. I mean this wasn't I mean, so forget fault mm-hmm. it's in the fact that people have misconstrued things because even this person you're supposed to be enemies with because mm-hmm. she snatched somebody's mm-hmm. husband they are moral enemies I mean according to what you told me you guys are not even enemies we're not I, I have not you know there's a way you present something people will think you are just trying to defend yourself and make yourself look good and I'm a private person I do videos talk about random things but my private life I'm very private so we're not enemies we actually talk but I don't come out to say hey, those that are fighting me and saying that I, I did this to her I did that we are talking now we are friends because that's the expectation we are friends we will even start posting ourselves and oh darling oh baby okay. I, I'm not that kind of person because I value privacy okay we're good we're friends we have been talking even before people ever thought that like when all of this was going on when all the media wahala was going on we had already started talking because we had a common denominator <laughs> okay her yeah. child okay that he was with me and he was her child so we had to come together to find the best way for his interests okay it wasn't about me it wasn't about her or the man it was about the child that was everybody's interest that was the one connecting everyone you know you couldn't avoid that so we were not enemies not in the least i sh- i told you about it i showed yeah. you some things ahead yeah. so. you and dory simeon you're not yes. you're not enemies we're not enemies i mean so i i laugh now because when you said common denominator mm-hmm. i thought it was the man no and i mean because according to my own mathematics my mm. my emotional <laughs> geometry i am thinking that if two women mm. who are ex-wives of a guy bond mm-hmm. together then it must be <laughs> that it is the man there's something about the man because it cannot be <laughs> it, it, it must be that they have finally seen something about the man on which they can compare and share notes otherwise they wouldn't be friends think with me here <laughs> <laughs> yes, <now>. because <laughs> because it must be that because it couldn't have been that in the beginning when um he left her and he was with you. Couldn't have been that you and she at that point were friends. No, no. we're not. Uh, hey, you couldn't have I been just seen point. her like two or three times. Uh-huh. Yeah. It could have only been after he left that you now looked and she now looked. I guess like, wait, we are not enemies here. So it wasn't after, it wasn't when he left that we became friends. Okay. He was still there when 
we were like we were cool when i say friends it's not as if we go out to lunch dates or go shopping yeah. together <laughs> but you know how you're, you're you're cool with someone because she's an intelligent beautiful woman she's she's very talented she doesn't have the impressions out there are crazy because the person that i got to know even over the phone was someone totally different from the impression that was created in the first place you know so we would talk especially about the boy never about you know the man it was about the child what's best for him what's going on with school oh he's coming to you or he's coming to me or what do we do for him oh he needs this he needs that how do we do it just to make sure that he was okay you know so that's how it all started just to make sure there was peace everybody was fine for his sake because you don't want to start pulling him and making him have animosity towards any any party involved you know so but after the whole thing ended and he became my ex yeah <laughs> we did <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah we did she, <laughs> she knows, hey, why didn't you tell me that uh, it was like this be like uh, you didn't ask and the thing is i'm not here to apportion blame to say oh he did this and i would i would never do that okay. i i i pride myself in being a respectful person a lot of things were said about me on youtube because that's how i found out that my marriage had ended on youtube Yeah, I didn't know that my marriage had ended. Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. just let's just stop here for a minute. What do you mean you didn't know your marriage had had ended? You were you were just browsing YouTube, you were, you were looking for Beyoncé videos and then you saw st- I mean, come on. Well, the man in question traveled and was supposed to be away for a while and was supposed to come back. And a few days after the man traveled, my phone was buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. I received messages from people saying what's going on are you okay why didn't you tell me that there was something wrong blah 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 Then I'm like what are all these links they are sending me and I'm like Rumi Isabel let's go something's up let's <laughs> put YouTube for me and I'm there typing my name and before I'm done typing my name videos just start coming up Stella's dead marriage crashes eh, karma is a bitch there's that that there's the line this that I'm like, wait, what? I didn't know that, you know. And I called, we had a conversation, and I, even at that time, I still didn't know that anything like that had happened until I got the final call to say, uh, no, I'm not coming back. Oh, this is, I'm like, oh, wow, okay. You know, I don't want to go into full details. Ted, you don't do this to me. I've never talked <laughs> no, about this well, or mentioned this, you know. So it's, of course, every marriage has issues. And and people don't know how it all started, what impressions were created, what was said, what was not said. I'm not even going to, out of respect for all parties involved, there are some things that I'll just probably leave, leave as is. But one thing I will say, though, is that it's important for you as a human being to know yourself more and love yourself more and know what you want and what you don't want so that... Nobody will come to you and make you see things and tell you these are the things that you should want. Because if you don't have that strength and identity of yourself, someone who is supposed to be that person for you can decide who you should be and how you should be. But every the whole thing is has polarized people, friends, family members, in-laws like I'm on this person's side. Oh, I'm team this, I'm team that. That's why I really don't talk about it. It's not as if I'm scared of anything. No, it's done. Some people are even wondering, are they still married? No, I'm not. I'm divorced. I'm single. This is the first time I'm saying it categorically. Because even Rumi was like, Hesti, you know you've never said anything. Teddy will ask you these questions. Are you ready to answer? <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I will pray. You know, let the Holy Spirit guide my mouth. But yeah, it's it's done. It's been almost three years now. So, um, however, it's just the the team this and team that because of how people you know in the beginning it was a lot of media wahala husband snatcher did this that that and some people who knew me knew that there were things that I was I was not capable of doing there must have been something that made me accept you know so for them to come to me they received heat too for still being friends with me or for still working with me they received their own heat ah you they support Stella Stella we do this to person Stella. and they're like you don't know her You don't know the real story. You don't know what happened. You did you don't know her side of the story. You've read stuff. You don't know who she is. So 
at this point, because they were friends to both of us, it, it now became a problem of who should I identify with more? Who can I be seen with more? Uh, when I see this person, there are some things I shouldn't say or talk about. How do I avoid, you know? It became so like sensitive to a lot of people. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to do this to people. I don't want to add to all of this by going to talk. I don't, and I don't talk about things like this in public. Before him, there was somebody else that I married. It didn't work out. I, nobody heard my voice. I didn't talk about it. That one passed quietly. Because As a matter of fact, I didn't believe yeah. you had gotten married. Yeah, it lasted eight months. Biggest mistake of my life because the guy was an amazing guy. But he was my friend, my best friend. And religion is what caused that problem that made us marry when we were not supposed to be married. We were supposed to be very good friends because as my friend, he was awesome. Hmm. But as a married couple, mm -mm, it didn't work. We just messed it up and we knew it. So when we went our separate ways, we were like out of love and respect for each other. Let's just leave it. We don't talk about it. We don't mess anything up. We just leave it as is so that we can still say, hello, are you okay? How are you? Yeah. And that's how that ended. That's why I don't also want to make this negative or messy because of the way it all started. I'm, I'm not that kind of person that will come and defend myself because a lot of things were said. People blamed me for this last one when they don't know what happened oh Nami Nami do this and Stella did that Stella did that it's, it's God paying her back I'm like y'all don't know the God that I serve <laughs> yeah I saw a lot of that yeah. it's karma it's yeah. karma I say you don't know the God that I serve and you don't know what he knows because he knows the truth he knows the things that you don't even say because he's the one that knows the end from the beginning so for him to keep blessing me and taking care of me I don't think people understand the meaning of karma because it's, it's in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Teju is a lot, but... Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm glad. Uh, before I let us move away from this, when you say religion <laughs> made you get married, I have my own things about religion to, to when I think about how religion has messed a lot of people up in marriage and all of that. But in this case, what exactly uh, happened? Okay, so we were friends, very good friends. We were very close friends. And... We were not sure if we were ready to date or we should just leave it as is, but we started attending a church together. And he was choir director, I was in the choir and all of that. And of course, the leaders of the church felt like this is wrong. You know, both of you are together and um, you are church workers. You have to set a good example. You can't do this. You can't be single like this and be, you know, you will be tempted to, you know, do things. The body will born. Like, yes. <laughs> so you can't do, and you know, when you, throw yourself into church because at that point in my life I was having issues with my spiritual self I was more in my religious work than my spiritual work so it was all about the church and what the church expected as opposed to my relationship with God my relationship with Christ so I was following church like blindly you know so when they say things like this you don't want to offend the church that you represent you stand on the pulpit you carry the microphone to represent god and sing and people are moved by the holy spirit and then they tell you no this is wrong you can't be doing this here when you're not you know married let's let's do this for you and then immediately before i knew it we had marriage counseling session for that they told us oh yeah said date you have to do this thing quickly and myself you know, because he wasn't ready at the time. In fact, by when he proposed, he did it so nicely because he knew me so well. Emotions just got in the way. I just said, yes, what make we do am You know me more than anybody else. I know you, so let's just do it. Church said we should do it. Okay, fine. I just said, yes. No plan, no. We didn't get to know each other in the other way because we knew each other as great friends. But by the time we got into the marriage and saw that we were not compatible as a couple, we were great friends and a lot of people don't know that there's a difference and so that um, incompatibility just messed a lot of things up and we're like what know. church was this? <laughs> let me not throw them because I know your church I mean well I think I know your church this particular one I don't know if you know it <laughs> <laughs> okay okay I don't know if you know it he's popular but I don't want to mess things up <laughs> okay okay so let's leave that now so I have a longish type question for you. Wow, let me yeah. drink water. <laughs> I have a longish type question for you because I, I want to lay the the foundation for the question. Okay, this is perhaps the pièce de résistance. So, I have concluded that if 
my marriage were to ever break up, if I were to ever divorce the woman to whom I'm married right now, the mother of my kids, the mm-hmm. twins, mm-hmm. I, I have concluded that my conclusion will be that mm. I just wasn't meant to get married. My conclusion will never be that I married the wrong person. Because as far as was humanly possible, before I married that woman, I did to the best of my ability. I did everything. I, I prayed, I fasted, I counseled, I read books, I went to seminars. I did everything. In fact, just to sow trust in you, the way you're sowing trust in me with this interview, I'm going to tell you something that my wife doesn't even know. So I'm going to tell it to you first and by extension on the whole world. Uh, during the period of one month, I went through my wife's phone, then my girlfriend's phone, three times without her knowing and I went through her phone on the instructions of my father. Wow. Back then we used to use Blackberry phones. Mm-hmm. So when she came to see me, I used to live in an apartment in Victoria Island. She'd, she'd be cooking or she'd go downstairs to do something. She'd be charging her phone. I'd sneak off and I'd check her Blackberry messages. Dad said do it three times. First time, I saw nothing untoward. Great. Second time, nothing untoward. Third time, then I went to tell my dad. Then dad said, great. Now that you found nothing, do not ever check that girl's phone again. Don't ever check that woman's phone ever. Not now, not when you get married, not for the rest of your life. Mm. Invest trust in that woman and your marriage. Right. So the point being that I did all of that. So if we ever divorce, God forbid, it won't be that I married the wrong person. I'll just conclude immediately. Mm. I wasn't supposed to get married because mm. I don't believe marriage is for everybody actually. So I wonder, do you feel like that sometimes? And, and I ask this being that consider that all of this started mm-hmm. because life happened. Yeah. The only reason your first marriage ended was because Jai Deji Abodere. He died. He died. Yeah. Fact, the way people were like white on rice, like beans and bread, like groundnut and gari with ice block. I'm sure that if Babaji were still alive, you will still be married. Yes. You wouldn't be this person who had done it three times. Yes. So life happened the first time. Yes. The second time, you were probably reeling from all of that. Life was happening, you know, bad decisions. I can understand that people pressuring you. Yeah. That happened. This third one, this guy walked away. So at, at, at this point, are you like, man, I have, you know what, I'm done. I have given, you, I'm done with this thing. Or are you like, you know what, I believe in love. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to keep trying. I don't care how long it takes. So here's my problem. Because there's a problem to answer that question. The normal me, as I am now, I'm done. That's what I'm saying to myself because I've been through enough pain to last me a lifetime. And I don't know how many humans can take what I've had to deal with over time, you know, and still function. So the normal me will say I'm done. However, the problem now is I'm 45. (laughs) I still have some way to go. And I'm a lover, Teju. People, they take and laugh at me. My friends, my family, they'll say, you know, if they say uh, love like a fool, you understand? Fool for love. Madame Romance, now it's my face. <laughs> That's supposed to be there. So I have so much love to give. And I love love. I love to receive love and to give love. Now, to be honest, I know that there's no way, I will say, from now till I die. I will not be interested in any other man. That's a lie. You know, I'm a human being with blood in my vein. I'm not a firewood stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, would I preempt things and say, oh, never, 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 I will never. That's a lie because anything can happen. But this time, I want to do it different. A lot of people don't know something about me. I wrote it in my last edition. I've had social anxiety since I was a kid. My family didn't know, but my late husband knew. And he helped me. He had my back. You know. Meeting new people is not easy for me. I have to battle mentally. Being in a crowd, attending events, sometimes people don't understand why I don't go for certain events. I have to psych myself to really, really be able to go. I can be on stage and I'm the boldest person, but take me off stage and put me in the crowd, midst of people. I'm dead because I feel people are judging me. I'm going somewhere with this. This was caused by trauma. I was molested at the age of eight by my cousin. 
And from then on, because I wasn't allowed to speak about it, my uncles and people in the village shut me up. You can't do that. If you do that, he will be banished. He will be ostracized. He will be this, that. And it's a disgrace to our family name. Don't talk. So I held it all in. Didn't realize that it affected me in so many ways. And it came off as social anxiety. So I couldn't, I felt, I will, I will go to places and I'll feel naked. That people are actually stripping me and looking at me and judging me. And then it didn't help that I entered an industry where you are scrutinized, you are talked about, you are written about. So it was hard for me. So when I met Jay and Jay became my husband, he was the best thing that ever happened to me. That's why the man was my world. You knew us. You would come to the house. You knew how we were. So when he passed, the issue that I had was hoping and, and believing that I will find a J that would help me through it the way Jay used to talk me through it and support me. And I was wrong in thinking that if I meet someone and you get to know my issue, that you wouldn't take me for granted or use it against me, but you will be there for me. So I was looking at the wrong things and looking for the wrong things and believing that I was pouring out my love and loyalty in return to protect my my mental state, my heart, because that's all I knew. I married Jay at 21. I met him when I was 17. So my entrance into loving and marriage and relationship was with a man that was the embodiment of love and respect and loyalty and all of that. So he taught me to love and that's the only kind of love I ever knew. And that's what I thought that I would have. Probably that's why I didn't give up on marriage after the second one. And in the third one, I'm like, maybe third time is a charm. Maybe this is it. This is my last bus stop. And even when things were going a funny way, I stayed because I'm like, okay, maybe this is how it's supposed to be, that you're supposed to go through hell, but you should stick through it and whatever it is, stay, stay the course, which I thought I was doing. However, it happened this way. That's why I said it's a problem because of the way I learned about love, the way I learned to give love and receive love because of Jay. So that's who I have become. It will be hard for me to say, never again. I will never love again. I will never be in this again. And I've decided to let God decide how my life would go. If God says, you'll be by yourself till the end of it, you have tried, I don't have a choice. You go hard, shot because, you know, because, you know. <laughs> because, but, you know. Well, you know <laughs> so, because. <laughs> because. <laughs> so, I mean, but if I do find love again and God approves this time and gives me a sign that, do it again. I will not lie. I will. Okay. That is great because I have, I, I know many people, but I, I have one of good authority. I know, I have a friend who would sell his mother, his left arm, his liver, and perhaps an eye if you would take him like, just to go on a date. He doesn't want my, just to go on a is, date. Is he Italian? Well, um, he's... Want, I'm looking for an Italian. Okay, so Nigeria's out of it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, okay, so um, that would explain why you wrote this book. I didn't know about the, uh, you know, uh, the molestation when you were young and all of that. And so I read this book. So you wrote a book. Hey, you wrote. Yes, I'm an author. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you wrote a book. Yes, I did. Mama na girl. Mama is a girl, man. <laughs> so, you know, when I first saw that you wrote a book, I thought it was going to be an autobiography or something. Yeah. And so I, I got the book, and it, it was fiction. Yes. And so I'm reading this book and I'm liking it. You know, it's, it's giving me easy goes to school vibes, that African vibes. I'm reading and I'm enjoying But as, I, as I'm reading, I'm like, Stella is going to break my heart with this character very soon. This character is about to get into trouble. Because I'm emotional like that mm -hmm. about women and, you know, molestation. I, ca I can't handle it. <laughs> you know, I can't, you would think if I'm watching a movie, and there's rape, I, I walk out. I just cannot. Maybe in my former life, maybe I was a woman <laughs> who, I, I just cannot, who worked in a hospice or something. I, I cannot handle it. So I'm reading this and the character in this uh, walk and several other females go through stuff. Yeah. And so at that point, because, because I didn't know what you told me, and I'm thinking that surely Stella does not know anybody mm. who has gone through this type of stress really it's it's so much pain to put did, did did your experience figure somewhere in here yes some of the things that happened to me um this is i made it fiction and i told the story through one 
particular character, even though there were five women who went through this that I picked, because I was working with a women's organization, Project Alert, in Nigeria, and I spoke to a lot of women that period, and when they told me their stories, I said, it's not possible. It's not possible that you went through this, because I had been through stuff, but this was crazy. And so when I decided that, okay, I wanted to write a book, I actually thought that my first book would be a romance novel because I'm a romance person. But I thought about it and I'm like, nah, if I'm going to have a chance to be an author, let me be a voice to a lot of women out there who feel unheard, you know, who feel like nobody listens to them. I'm not the only one who's going through it, so I don't have a right to come and be talking. And I'm like, no, they sh people should know that these things are happening. They're not, I didn't just make up stories off the top of my head. There, there are bits and pieces of me in there, hmm. yes. And then there are so many other things from the other women that I just wrote into one full story. So that is not like a, a biography, a documentary type book. I didn't want it to be boring. I wanted it to look like it's fiction, but it's really true. Well done. I, I read it all in about one day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, when is Stella going to write the next one? Ah. <laughs> this is good. How long take you to write this? I wrote this book in 2016. 2016 and it was published just this year this year yes what was the delay about hmm. fear that's why i've been talking about fear lately that that's one powerful wep weapon that can hold you back from doing all the things you want to do because in my head i'm like who wants to read book from me if i'm not writing about myself or acting do people even feel like i'm intelligent enough to write something and they will actually spend money and buy it and read it. Who wants to hear about things that are happening about to women? They're tired of mm, women suffer, women suffer. Okay, it's okay. You know, <laughs> I had what if, who will, how will, so many questions that kept holding me back. And I said, next year, next year, I kept pushing it. But this year, when I, when I moved back to Georgia, I said to myself, I will not live the way I used to live. I will not live in fear. This is the new me. I'm my own person again. I'm going to go back to all the things that I've been saying I want to do. So it's no longer I want to, I want to. I'll start doing it. And I just shut my eyes and I'm like, it's because everything was ready. Cover, everything was ready. It was just to publish. So, of course, my Madame Rume, she's my graphics designer. She designed the whole book after the cover was done. And she said, SD, it's time. And we just did a launch and I'm like, it's out there. Anything we want happen, make it happen. But, you know, to my surprise. Yeah people who have bought this book they everyone tells me the same thing i read it in one day i couldn't put it down people have sent me videos i just don't want to i can't post it because most of them don't look the way they want to look on social media people send me videos of them crying because they could identify with some of the things that happened to these women there it has happened to them but they couldn't talk about it so it's like thank you like Cry, like bawling, like crying, crying. Even my siblings couldn't believe it, you know. So, some things they found out after this book was released that they didn't know had happened to me. So, <laughs> how did they figure it was you? Because you didn't say it was you in the book. So, they were putting two and two together with the scenarios that were happening. I replaced a lot of characters in there and stuff. So, they were like, wait, when she died. We know that it was our family member that came and collected some documents and hid some things for you and said, oh yeah, clean your eyes right now. Let's deal with what's on ground. When you finish and you are going back out there, you can continue to cry because you use one hand, wipe tears, do what you need to do for your children. Then you can cry again. Oh, this is time for you to be a strong woman. They remembered that. And they were like, oh my gosh, was that what was happening upstairs that day that mommy came? I'm like, yep. Wait, wait, wait. You, 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 there was, there was, there was, I, I forget the word now because I'm so <laughs> shocked that I'm, I'm, I'm struggling now for, for the word. There was, there was antagonism from Jay's family uh, when he died. Because I've always wanted to ask you that. You know that look, you married into money. You married into the punch Casual, you dynasty. Won't put me for no, I mean, because I'm thinking, <laughs> look, see, because we've just said it. We know how Jay loved you. So I'm thinking there is no way Jay's lovely wife, after he died suddenly and untimely, is not rolling in millions. I mean, Angelica and Isabel should be taken care of for the rest of time. This <laughs> this guy comes from money. You know, even if not you, they. My laughter should answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will tell you though is Jay never 
believed or depended on that. Jay worked like he was, he worked too hard. Sometimes that's the only thing that made us fight. Dude, calm down, rest. He had how many companies running? He was hands on, he was traveling. Today, Abuja, tomorrow, South Africa, this, that, he was everywhere. He launched MTN. He was the voice of MTN Join. We were there for the launch of Virgin MTN Atlantic. MTN Turaya. Turaya, you remember. Of course, he, I remember. We're the comedians on that tour, you know. <laughs> he did, uh, uh, is it Benson and Hedges? Rothman's, all these Rothman's mega groove. He did a lot of, I mean, the guy was everywhere. So for him, making money for his family was his pride. Working was his pride. So it was not about that. But you would expect that, okay, you know, he belonged to a dynasty and, you know, things will happen. But, well, let's just say that God, God has helped us through. Wow. So, I mean, I just won't leave this for a minute. So let me just try to skirt around this. Mm -hmm. Uh, What was the problem they had with you? I don't know. I'm sure that if I knew, I would be. That would be the first thing I would. Yeah, but say. was that the first time you were fight? Because you would have known before that these people have a problem with me. That would have been the first time you were find out after he passed. Mm, that wasn't the first time. I, I, I wasn't really, really shocked. I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't expect anything else. So I mean, yeah. But I just thank God that my parents raised me to be independent minded not person minded that okay. when everything happened the first thing my father said to me is you will not beg you will not cower to anybody you are not lazy if it comes accept if it doesn't come get up no time to be doing morning cloth and garment you have two children in front of you get up and work any way I can support you in my old age, I will support. My father sold land wow. to help me and my girls so that we don't go hungry or homeless in Lagos. He did all he could. He was retired. So it's not as if he was earning salary. But you know, my siblings all pitched in. All of them supported me. And they said, Mm-mm. avoid drama, avoid court case, avoid anything that would cause problem for you. Your focus now is to take care of these two children. You will mourn for the rest of your life, no matter where you are, who you are married or whatever. But your focus now, your children. Oh yeah, get up and walk. Now so I don't date till now. Man, this is where, because I read the book and I didn't put you in the shoes of that character at that point. I, I'm like, this is somebody Stella knows if this is somebody real. This cannot yeah, be Stella. The only thing is the man there is not Jay. Because you know Jay was... No, no, Jay was, not, Jay was <laughs> not. Jay was... So it was, that's why I said I had to make it fiction so that it's easier to read. Yeah. Because if I write true, true stories of people in there, you can't go past page five. You'll break down. A lot of people will not be able to get through the book and read it. I had to do that. And then I had to have... A redemptive story at the end of the day to actually after taking you on that emotional high yeah something to make you go okay at least oh yeah something good came out of it yeah which is where i am now when i look at my daughters and i look at where god has brought me from everything i've gone through whew, i'm not where i want to be right now but i'm i'm not where i used to be i'm grateful yeah, you're yeah. definitely not in Lagos. No. Because I want to ask you, mm-hmm. what is one of Africa's biggest actresses doing living in the United States? <laughs> Forget Africa's biggest. You're actually one of the biggest actresses in the world, <laughs> pound for pound, going by number of movies. How many movies have you done? Uh, I've done about 200 or more. <laughs> but that's a joke compared to what people are doing now. People are doing film per second per second. I'm like, ah. Oh. 200 yeah. movies yeah so one of, what is one of africa's most recognizable faces doing living in the united states hmm a lot of things though um i wanted my children to have better opportunities uh, in education healthcare, but most importantly as women to be able to express themselves the way they want to express their creativity the way they want to and not be restricted by the kind of universities we had you know my children they wanted to study something different they wanted i just noticed something about them and i knew that uh, if i stay here they won't you know and it, i had to make that sacrifice it was a painful sacrifice because if i had stayed back home for the past 10 years 
I know what I would have done or where I would have been, you know, work-wise. But when you have kids and you know that, okay, this is the time to really mold them and support them to get the best. And then when they get to a certain level, it's okay, I've done my part. I'm going to face me now, which is what's happening now. But I wanted them to have that um, education that was different, that would allow them to make choices and not be under pressure as every woman. At this age, you're supposed to marry. At this age, you're supposed to have this amount of being husband or have children. Mm -mm. It's what do you want to do? What are you passionate about? What are you ready for? You know, who are you? give them the opportunity because in Nigeria I'm sorry in Africa we don't we're not given an opportunity to know who we are as women we're told who we are and what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to end up and that's it it's a cycle you are born you are raised for marriage yeah if you don't learn this how will you do in husband house if you don't do this how will you take care of your children you are raised to be a family woman you're not raised to have a mind of your own you're not raised to learn things or know things for yourself or advocate for yourself or explore or expand your mind. No, you're told what to do. Marry, maybe have a job, have children till you retire and then grow old and die. I'm like, no, not for my girls. And then health things as well. I wanted them to be in a place where having health uh, uh, management is not a problem. You can't, if no matter what it is that's wrong, we nip it in the bud. You have something... We are not thinking of how we take a visa. How would they now pay for hospital abroad? No, you are right there. Anything that happens, we know where to fix it, you know. Um, and then I also wanted, I needed a break. I needed, you know how it is when you're in a place and you feel like you're a big fish. But the ocean is probably kind of small, like a pond. Because you're big. Ah, you're a star, you're a celebrity, you're top three, you're big. And I'm like, that's good. That's fine. But before I get complacent, before I get to the point where I'm not trying anymore because I feel like I have arrived, maybe try something different and see if I can actually rise in a place where they don't know me. Can I do something significant over time that will make me also become that ah, big fish in a very huge ocean where everybody wants to get to? What can I do? I said, okay, let me try. Lo and behold, I came to America. <laughs> the ocean big passes, I think. <laughs> but thank God we're doing we're doing good work. We're trying, we're pushing a lot of hurdles to cross, and we're crossing them one by one. But I don't regret being here. I mean, now I go home twice, three times a year to do projects. I go home to see family. So it's not like I'm really missing out on anything. But I'm glad that it affords me the opportunity to travel whenever I want, wherever I want, do the things that I want to do in a structured environment with all the hustling involved, but at least structured. Okay. So you try to go mainstream in America, uh, mm. acting and all of that. Oh, girl, it's a, it's a long thing. <laughs> so what I've realized is that when it comes to that, when you start chasing them, it won't get far because people who were born and raised here, people who are the real African Americans, they're still struggling to be seen, to be heard. Then you will just come. You just think you because you live in Georgia, Tyler Perry will not knock on your door and say, Take script. It's not like that. You know, there's so many things that we did not learn back home that you have to do here. All the classes you have to attend, getting your agent right, getting your manager right, doing your self tape, doing your resume, your headshots, making every, making sure everything is on point, and knowing how to socialize and network and join communities and things like that. There's a lot of work. But what I what I've learned being here is that instead of chasing them, you create something that will make them see you and chase you. That way you have a better and bigger bargaining power. They respect you more, which is the formula, the strategic formula that Tyler Perry used to make a name for himself. Because he tried and he, he failed woefully. And then he decided, you know what, let me be doing my place here and there. Tried for how many years? No, How many people showed up for his place? It was crap. To the point he was writing his place on top tissue paper. He was broke, sleeping in his car. It was really bad. But when people saw his consistency and saw that this guy had something and his audience started growing bigger and bigger he started making more money he started calling the shots now he had created his own industry that's how i see it he's created a whole audience that looks up to him and says you know what if he can do it i can do it he's one man that has created this didn't have any hollywood studio backing him he created this i can do it too and that's the formula that i think everybody should sit down and think about Instead of pursuing, I want to, I must enter the Hollywood. I must go to LA. There are million and one people in LA who can do what you can do, who look like you, who can even do it better. I 
cannot speak better than Akata would speak their accent. I cannot speak like Oyibo. So when they see me, what do they see? They don't have enough roles for people like me. So what do I do? I have to start creating the roles for people like me that I want to see and make magic happen. Mm. So Nadia will do so. I see. Final question. Yeah. Are you going to go back to Nigeria ever to go and live in Nigeria? And I say that because people always say, you know, it's where to make money. I mean, you heard all the arguments. It's uh, mm. it's the best place to make money. Mm. There's nowhere like home. You know, it's where you're a star. Better to be a big fish in a small pond and all of that. You heard all of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you ever going to go back now that you can go and come as you mm-hmm. as, like as you want? If I answer this question as the way I am, feel now and it was happening now, no. But I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that it will become a reality that when I decide to take things easy and retire and say, you know what, my children, you've you've grown enough, you are taking care of your own families and all of that, let me go and retire. I'm hoping that I'm able to go back and retire back home. But that is all dependent on what I meet there. Because when you've lived here for so long and you've enjoyed structure, you've seen how things can go, and you've seen benefits of aging here, it doesn't stop you from doing what you normally do because once you go back home at 60 you don't end unless you have businesses that are bringing money for you you don't get work you don't get normal things and it's hard you know so i'm hoping that the economy gets better i'm hoping that it's a safer and an enabling environment for someone to at least live a decent life when you go back you know and that it's it's home because when you say there's no place like home the home that you knew is not the home that it is now so that phrase for me means something different now so i'm hoping that my home becomes what it is again but i still go back to try and do the little that i can to help the people that i can so that it's not as if oh i just cross leg for america they wait for them to fix them then i will now go and enjoy no that's why i go as often as i can so I'm just praying that things will turn around for us back home because who wants to be a second-class citizen in another man's country? I would really love to be in my own country where I have my family, my friends, my people, my colleagues and do the things that I'm known for and be happy, you know, so. Yeah, so you go back if Nigeria gets better or if an Italian man from Nigeria or who lives in Nigeria marries you Well, and decides to live in Nigeria. I would think about it. (laughs) Stella, thanks for doing this. Thank Parts you. of this couldn't have been easy for you, even though I was trying to tread lightly and all of that. But thank you. Yeah. I have so much to ask you still, but I try not to do more than an hour. Thank you. You have tried for me. <laughs> I bless God. Uh, <laughs> bam. That's it.